Your Honor, I believe, based on your body language, with your arms crossed and a scowl on your face, looking at us like we did something wrong, should be much I more. This is really serious. This is so serious. Why do you think we're all here? Bombshell allegations in a Florida courtroom on Friday. As lawyers for South Florida rapper YNW Melly allege Broward County prosecutors committed a felony themselves in the rapper's double murder case. You indicated here that counsel for the defendant believes that there is probable cause that the witnesses under subpoena, comma, the members of the state attorney's yeah. office and the elected state attorney to have committed obstruction of justice and attempted witness tampering and felony pursuant to FS 838.022 for misuse of public office due to their actions since October of 2020. That's what it says, Ron. That's right. Very serious allegation. Very serious allegation. Very serious. A 10-page motion filed by the defense on September 26 says the state had possession of evidence that would have impeached the credibility of a lead investigator in the case, Detective Mark Moretti. The motion goes on to say the state should have presented the evidence to the defense prior to the trial. Maybe they should get their own lawyer. Maybe they should take the fit, but we need to tear it out. But before the court could figure it out, Judge John Murphy, the same judge from Melly's first trial, demanded lead prosecutor Christine Bradley be at the hearing because so many of the defense's claims center around her. Typically, what I do when I have a, a Brady or some issue about it, the prosecutor who's involved in it tells me she comes in here, she's got an obligation of candor to the court, and I ask her a question, and she advises me as to what's going on and why, why there's a change, why something like that. But she's not here. This is her case. We spent two, three months trying the case originally. It came to a hung jury, but she's not here for this. I don't understand that. Bradley is eventually brought into the courtroom to testify, but not before the judge hears from the woman, Assistant State Attorney Michelle Boudros, who waved the flag reporting concerns about Detective Moretti's credibility. Detective Moretti said to Deputy Morell, you need to say you were here when I served that search warrant. And it was kind of like an awkward moment. Someone described it just kind of getting punched twice in the head. So there's a search warrant that gets served. And I'm like, what, what's going on? And then the next thing, he's asking this deputy to lie for him. And again, I'm like, I'm like this isn't like, I'm in the twilight, so I'm like, this can't really be happening. Here's where the allegations start. In October 2022, Detective Moretti met with Jamie King, YNW Melly's mother. Investigators were trying to determine whether or not she was involved in witness tampering before Melly's case went to trial. Boudros was there. Miss King reached into her purse, and she was fumbling with her phone. Um, you know what she was doing? You know, it's a phone, so as she has this phone. It's, you know, I, don't, I couldn't tell you what type of phone she had. She was pressing buttons on it. And Detective Moretti was saying over and over again, don't turn off that phone, don't, don't turn off that phone. I knew she was doing something on her phone. I just couldn't swear to exactly what it was that she was doing on the phone. It looked like she was turning off her off her phone or sending a message or doing something on it. I just couldn't tell there was a scuffle going on. Okay, and what did Detective Moretti do? Detective Moretti um, physically took the phone from her. Boudreaux testified that after Jamie King and her attorney left the conference room, Boudreaux says she later overheard Detective Moretti showing a willingness to lie about the phone seizure. Do you say anything to Moretti? No, I don't say anything to Moretti. I leave the room, I'm done with the statement. As far as I'm concerned, I'm done investigating this case. Why? Because I don't work with detectives that solicit lies. Boudreaux says she notified Christine Bradley about Detective Moretti's remarks right after they happened and learned Bradley called an internal affairs investigation into Detective Moretti, who claimed he was joking. Christine Bradley testified next and gave her own account of what happened. That Brady notice that I just showed you, you're saying that there are incorrect statements of that. That is correct. And the incorrect statement is that you were not told by the ready that he was joking. That is correct. The indication has always been, and if it was inartfully conveyed at some point, the indication has always been that the deputy Gorell responded in a very flippant manner when asked about showing up. Flippant manner to whom? To deputy, I'm sorry, to Detective Moretti. Does he say that in his court report, Gorell? He, I don't believe so. Okay. So the flippant matter came from Moretti, and 
somehow you communicated that Moretti said it was a joke. Is that what we're putting together? I did not say that Moretti said that he had made a joke in any way, shape, or form. So you've never made the statement that Moretti said he was joking? My statement was, at all times, and if it was ever not clear or misinterpreted by whoever was listening to it, was that Deputy Gorrell made the statement that was of a flippant nature. Judge Murphy decided the allegations presented in court Friday were sustainable enough to call another hearing where the defense plans to call Prosecutor Bradley back to the stand, Detective Moretti, and the district's top state attorney, Prosecutor Harold Pryor. Jury selection for Melly's retrial will not begin on Monday, October 9th, like originally scheduled. Instead, next week, the judge said they will argue the state's motion to quash defense subpoenas of several prosecutors, including the elected state attorney. The defense motion to dismiss the case altogether will be heard next Friday on October 13th. If the case does move forward, then they will argue several outstanding motions the following week. Reporting for Law & Crime Network, I'm Elizabeth Milner.